Hey everybody, welcome back to the Liam Photography Channel. I'm your host, Liam Douglas, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating Luminar's, a Luminar AI's sky replacement technology. So I'm doing this video because I've had quite a few people reach out to me and ask me how well it works. So I figured I'd go ahead and do a tutorial. I'm sure other people have already done tutorials, but I'm going to go ahead and do one anyway. So as you can see here, I have six sample images. Now this first one I captured in 2019 at Seneca Lake in upstate New York. And the sky's not too bad, but I'm just not thrilled with the way it looks. So we're going to go over here from the catalog tab. We're going to go to the edit tab and then we're going to go down to sky and we're going to select a new sky for this photo. So let's try, let's try this one, see how it looks. All right. So that one looks really good. And if we zoom in, we see that there's no issues with the blue sky bleeding into the rest of the image. Everything looks good there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and stick with this one. This one is called Blue Sky 4. And let's move on to the next image. Now, this one is one I captured in October of 2019 for my Forgotten Pieces of Georgia documentary series on abandoned small business buildings in the state of Georgia. And as you can see, the sky was really awful that day. And you know what happens? Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate. Uh, if you've been doing photography for any amount of time, you know when you're doing outdoor photography, the sky does not always cooperate. So let's go ahead and let's try this one here. We'll see how this one looks. And that one looks really good. And again, if we zoom in, you'll see that it works really well. It's not bleeding the blue into the rest of my image. Now, I'm not going to say that this software is absolutely perfect because it will sometimes make mistakes. It'll sometimes bleed a little bit into your image, possibly at the edges uh, of your other content, or even uh, have some weird artifacts when it's trying to deal with other things. So uh, this one here, this one is Bright Blue Sky 1. This one looks really good. Now, I captured this image at William B. Olmsted uh, State Park in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, December of 2019. So it was over Christmas time. It was getting close to Christmas time. Uh, so, of course, the, the, the sky that day was crappy. It generally always is in the wintertime. Uh, but as you can see, it didn't bleed the blue into the tree limbs. Uh, that can sometimes happen. Um, maybe a little bit of artifacting uh, artifacting going on here or i could be wrong it might be just some of the cloud uh the cloud pieces in the in the uh, sky replacement itself but overall the image looks really good a lot better than it did it really makes the image stand out more now for these next images i shot these in elmira new york uh, December of 2020, while my wife and I were up north visiting our family for the holidays. And I shot these ones a little bit underexposed. I generally shoot all of my images just a little bit underexposed so I can adjust the highlights and shadows in post and bring everything out. So let's go ahead and bump up the exposure. I hadn't post-processed these images, so that's why they're still underexposed a bit. So we'll go ahead and bring the exposure up. That looks a lot better. And then we're going to go ahead and go back to the sky replacement. And we're going to click here. And as you can see, they give you a good selection of skies. And then you can also buy some additional ones by clicking the button here. But we're going to stick with what we have. Um, I don't use sky replacement all the time, you know, because most times I get lucky and get a decent sky. So it's not something I use all the time. I don't really see the need to buy additional sky packs. But you can if you want to. Uh, so let's see if we can find one that works here. Let's see. That one looks pretty good. And that creates a little bit more of a dramatic effect. Now, you will notice in this image, because of this thin power line here, we do get just a little bit of artifacting going, going on along the power line. The thicker one wasn't affected. It's just this one that looks thinner in the image because of the angle of view I was at when I shot the image. So, like I said, it's not absolutely perfect, but it does work 
almost pretty much flawlessly 99.9% of the time. And th that little bit of artifacting is no big deal. You could go in and fix this in Photoshop with the spot healing brush tool. So it's not the end of the world. Now, I do like that sky because it gives a really nice moody look to this image. So we're going to stick with that one. That one's called Dramatic Sky 2. And this next image, again, we're going to go up and we're going to adjust the exposure first. Now, I captured this one during the same trip. I was driving through uh, downtown or part of Elmira one day, and I spotted this old tow truck. And I love antique vehicles, so I figured I'd stop and snap a quick shot of this because it's a beautiful truck. And again, of course, being it was wintertime, the sky was absolute garbage. So we're going to find a new one to put in here. Let's see how this one looks. Uh, eh, eh, I don't really like that one a whole lot. Let's try another one. There we go. Now, that one I like. And as you can see in this one, you actually have sunbeams that are coming down through the clouds. So it creates a really nice look. And again, you don't see any bleed into objects that were already in the photograph. No issues with the tree branches or the roof of the house or anything like that. And this last one here, and let's go ahead and adjust the exposure on this one as well. We'll go ahead and bring it up uh, about one stop. There we go. Now, this building here is an abandoned pizza hut in Southport, New York. It, you know, it happens. You know, any business can fail, and even a large corporation like Pizza Hut can have locations that fail, and that's what happened here. And it was really sad because this location was open for a long time. Um, back when I was a kid, I remember it was popular with a lot of folks in both uh, this part of New York. And if you don't know the area, and I'm sure you probably don't, uh, Southport, New York is just across the border from my hometown area in Pennsylvania. So it's known as the Twin Tiers region. You have the northern tier of Pennsylvania, the southern tier of New York. And this Pizza Hut was really popular uh, when I was a kid because it was one of the only restaurants uh, and especially Pizza Huts in the area that served alcohol. So you could go here and you could get beer. You could order a pitcher of beer with your pizza. So it was really popular. And it's sad to see that it's closed now. Um, but you can see the building starting to get a little bit rough. So for this one, let's see. Maybe we could try something a little more dramatic. Uh, there you go. Now look at that. And see how it can change the mood of the image just depending on what sky you select. Um, and if we go down here more, I mean, I could go with a sunrise sky. Or I mean, a sunset sky, excuse me. Um, that looks really good. And then we have a sunrise one here as well, where you can see it looks like the sun's coming up in the background right here. And we do even have some Milky Way skies that you can use that look really, really nice. So you could actually, I mean, you could totally change the mood of the scene just by the sky you select. So now, you know, it makes the whole image look like it was actually nighttime when I captured it. And I actually kind of like that one. So I think I'm going to leave that one in there. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I don't do the sky replacement to, you know, defraud the viewer, if you will, you know, because I'm throwing stuff in there that wasn't there at the time. Most of the time, if I use sky replacement, it's just to make the image look a little bit nicer. Because as I said earlier in this video, Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate. There's going to be days where you go out and you see something that you want to shoot that catches your eye, or you had an idea for a photo that you wanted to make, and you had the perfect subject, you got great framing, great composition, and the sky doesn't cooperate. It happens. Even at uh, blue hour and golden hour, you know, sunrise and sunset, you're not always going to get those perfect colors that we all really enjoy in our images. So sometimes in order to make the image, you know, after you shot it on a day when you have a crappy sky, it's nice to be able to use software like this just to put a decent sky in to make the image really look nice. And, you know, and that was the case with most of the ones I did here. I was just adding a beautiful blue sky with some white clouds on a nice day. So I don't really feel like you're cheating the image that much. I mean, granted, it's not 100% accurate as far as the realism at the time the image was captured. 
but it does make the image look nicer. And I don't personally think there's anything wrong with that. Now, in the case of the last image, yeah, you're totally changing uh, the image here by putting in the Milky Way sky because it wasn't nighttime when I shot the image. It was late afternoon. And I can fix that. You know, I can always go back in here and I can choose a different sky to put in there. I could put this one in instead. Um, and that's going to be more appropriate for the time of day when I captured the image or maybe this one. This one looks good, so I could use this one. Um, and that's the idea. Uh, there you go. That one looks really good. So that's basically the whole idea with this software. Now, I've been using Luminar since the very first version. You know, I've used their software for many, many years. And their software has always been really good. Um, you know, it was a little clunkier in the early days. And they've done a lot of refining and a lot of improvements and added in a lot of new features and functionality. And I really appreciate that. So if you want to pick up a copy of Luminar AI, you can find a link in the description for this video. Uh, we, they do also have a new photo editor that's coming out this winter of 2021 that's called Luminar Neo. It's supposed to be a completely different kind of editor. Now, as far as I know, it's not replacing Luminar AI. Uh, they're still going to keep doing updates for Luminar AI and releasing new versions of that as well. It's my understanding anyways. Um, Luminar Neo is just supposed to be a different kind of editor, and I think a little bit more of a, an all-encompassing editor, but I don't know that 100% for certain. Um, I had applied to be part of the, the beta test pro, uh, beta pest, beta test program, excuse me, for Luminar Neo, and I never heard back from them, so I guess they already had all the people they needed. But anyway, so that is Sky Replacement AI in the Luminar AI software, and like I said, as you can see, it works really, really well. Every once in a while, you'll get some artifacting or a little bit of bleeding around uh, really small objects like tree branches could happen. It's, you know, it's not totally flawless, but it is some really powerful AI software and it does a fantastic job 99% of the time. So definitely nothing to complain about. All right. I want to thank you for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, watch the videos, comment on them, like them, share them out to on social media, and hit the little bell icon so you can be notified as new content drops. And I will see you next time.